Hi there everyone, good evening. I am back in the boudoir as the red curtains show. Uh, the Roxanne sign is on and we are ready to go. So what this is going to be is a weekly video hopefully where I show you some things that I've sold, some interesting things because there's been quite a few things we've sold this week and then I talk to you about what they sold for, what I paid for them, where I got them from little tips and tricks about the listing. So we're going to have a screen share of um, my eBay page. I'm going to show and I selected like 10, 15 items over the last week that I think might be interesting for you guys to have a look at. And we're going to talk about my listings as well as we do it. I'm going to give a little brief intro onto your performance page as well. Uh, because again, if you're looking to grow your business and stop becoming just a little on the side reseller to turn this into a full-time gig. You need to understand your business. You need to understand what your most popular items are. You need to understand what your outgoings are, what your eBay fees are. So I am checking these kind of things regularly and you guys need to be doing this too. So without further ado, um, let's swing over to eBay. Here we go. Now with any luck, you can still see my lovely face. I haven't done this for a while, so bear with me. Right then, so this here, we'll, we'll make this nice and easy. Let's go over onto your eBay seller hub. This is where we start all the time. So I'm going to start, start the day every single day. So, uh, yep, this is just to show you there. 55 items to dispatch. Uh, we've had a very, very busy weekend. It's been amazing, actually. So that's since Friday. So that's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday sales. Um... This isn't an opportunity for me to try and sort of brag or anything like that. I'm just, you know, using this as a springboard really to um, look at some listings and hopefully, as I say, give you some advice. So this is just uh, this is what we do. So from here, we scoot over to the performance tab and we go on to sales. Uh, we're looking at the last week's sales. So we need to then filter this down to from, we're going to say from, last Monday to today generate report this is a really really good report and eBay but their game big time recently with the numbers that they show you it's not perfect there's still some gaps missing um, I'd like to go be able to go back more than three months that would be great um, but yeah here we go right so this shows us that okay now this is why people see these numbers in it Oh, you know, Jason, you must be making loads of money on eBay. You know, we're really not. The business is doing really well. Uh, Mr. Vernon, me, isn't doing amazingly because he's paying himself just a fair amount. I've got staff, I've got loads of other overheads. I've got VAT to pay because we're VAT registered now. So this will hopefully give you guys some idea of the breakdown of where some of this goes. So in the last seven days, we've had just under £3,000 worth in sales. Now, if you look here, this is a really, really good metric, which up 24% on the previous week. So we've had a really good week this week. Now, of that, though, selling costs have been £593. That's eBay fees and postage. Postage is a huge cost for my business. But without it, you can't sell anything. So this number here, I take this kind of with a pinch of salt because the postage fees... You, you get them from the customer and then obviously straight away you use them again to buy postage with. So this is the important number here, the net sales of selling costs. So after eBay fees and after postage, this week we've had £2,300 in sales and that's up 34% on the previous week, which is really good. That's because we've had a couple of high value items this week that have pushed that up. So yeah, that's good. Uh, it says here we've sold 120 items, which is up third on the previous week. I don't understand that because that would mean that we only did 90 the previous week. So I don't I always think we, we, we sure we did more than that. Uh, average sales price per item is just under £25, which is amazing. Really, really pleased with that. Uh, sales via auction, zero. We don't do auctions. And sales for a fixed price is that. Okay, now this is the cool stuff here. eBay will now tell you if you have any repeat buyers. This week I didn't. It's very rare I get them. And I think due to the nature of what I sell, to be honest, we don't tend to get repeat buyers because um, we sell like a bit of everything. So yeah, um, total buyers 107. Now scrolling down to categories, 
it shows you your best selling categories of any particular time period, which is amazing. And it tells you how many items you sold. Does it tell you how many items you sold? No, it tells you uh, what quantity of your sales were down for that particular uh, category. So as you can see quite clearly here, Vinyl Records is my best seller this week. And Vinyl made up £620 of the 2000 300 pound i think it's of the net sales and of which it's 20 percent. so 20 percent of my sales this last week were vinyl uh lego so it's got toys and games but then it will show you the the exact uh category so construction and building toys lego complete sets we sold 500 quid worth of lego this week we which was actually up 750 percent on the previous week the reason being i bought a large collection of lego which has started selling so yeah that's that's what you would expect lego sells really really quickly it's got a very good sell through rate uh, video games and consoles 217 pound toys and games uh, 133 pound uh, that's model kits and aircraft toys and games aircraft and spacecraft 115 and then if you click view more that'll show you rest of the categories we've got films and tv other formats that's some old betamax tapes which i'm going to show you then we've got model boats we've got action figures and it will show you the most 20 most popular categories out of all your items and all of that should add up to near near the 2300 just looking at this yeah it's not the 2900 this is your net sales not gross which is really confusing because if you go back onto your seller hub, it's always your gross sales. So let's go on here. But when you see this item hit this here, that's your gross sales, including postage, including eBay fees. So it is a little bit confusing. I would like eBay to be able to give us the option to, on this main view here for us to see what the net sales are straight away. So go back to here then. So yeah, this is net. I wasn't getting anywhere near 2,900 on these. That's why. So yeah, it made me think. Um, so yeah, that's a really, really good view for you guys. If you're not sure what your biggest selling items are, if you're like me and you don't focus on one particular thing, you kind of sell a bit of everything. Sometimes you get a really nice surprise and say, well, hang on a minute. Yeah, it was 600 quid on vinyl. I mean, that wasn't a surprise because, you know, we do sell a lot of records. It is actually our biggest seller, um, as I found out. Um, so, that, yeah, but just to sort of see that in, in context and see those numbers was really, really good. And it's great that you can get that sort of snapshot of your business uh, this here really is just showing you a day by day breakdown of your sales. Then we've got selling costs here. So for me to have just under three grand in sales, it's cost me £593. So that shows you the breakdown here. eBay fees, 412 That's high. I'm not sure. It's usually 10%, which you think then would be. Ah, no, I'll tell you. Yeah, 10%. That includes postage costs you pay, in case you don't know, you pay eBay final value fee on the postage costs as well. So if you sell something for a pound with £10 postage costs, you pay 10% of the £11, not just of the pound. So yeah, bear that in mind, postage costs you pay eBay fees on. Which is why, uh, it's not something everyone does, but I bump my postage fees up a little bit, my postage costs up to offset that 10% on most things. And I don't seem that it makes a difference on my sales. I don't do free delivery on anything unless it's something that eBay is absolutely flooded with. So, yeah, if you factor that in that those items are going to cost you to post, especially if you're going to be sending 20, 50, 100 items a week, you know, put that extra little 30p on your listings. It just gives you a little bit more, a little bit more of a boost. It means that you're covering your costs a little bit because that doesn't factor in. Obviously, you charge the buyer postage, doesn't factor in packaging materials, doesn't factor in time to go to the post office it doesn't factor in 50 pence per record mailer that it costs me to send the record out in so i add that to my postage cost and hopefully it just helps cover those costs a little bit um, as you can see here e postage labels through ebay have been 180 pound um that isn't all my postage that i've done for some reason i now suddenly about a month ago started selling an awful lot overseas uh, eBay are now showing my listings on other eBay sites free of charge. So I now sell, I do still sell through eBay Global Shipping, but I do an awful lot of international shipping directly to other countries. Um, it's it's crazy. It's usually about 10% of my sales, but my postage costs are massively higher because 
it's costing like twenty pound an item to send it to America, twenty five pound to send something to Japan and so on. So that that's just for um, domestic postage bought on eBay, either through Royal Mail Packlink, sorry Royal Mail or uh, Packlink for larger items. Again, I will go through all my packaging bits and bobs and postage tips and tricks on another video further down the line. So yeah, so that's just a really, and then it will also show you then all of your listings, um, shows you what it was, what it sold for, so it will sell it, and then what it cost, and then what your net sales were. So this number here is all the money you received off the buyer for this item. Um, this number here includes the postage, which on a CD would have been £1.60. Uh, and then, so after all that was taken off, you're left with £1.71. So yeah, wonderful. Oh, one pound seventy-one. So, right, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at some of the cool items that we've sold this week. Um, we've sold lots of similar things. We've sold quite a bit of Lego. We've sold quite a lot of records. I'm not going to bore you with another record, another record, another record, and so on. So, but what I am going to do, I have picked a sort of few from each category just to try and hopefully um, highlight the range of things that we sell and pull in other people who may may not usually sort of sell those things and it would give you guys a bit of inspiration and a bit of knowledge and a bit of sort of uh, enthusiasm to try and go beyond your little niche and look to something else then then happy days so right cracking on first one i'm going to close that down right then where are we um, right this here oh also i can talk about my listings a little bit as well as we do this so this is a a Betamax tape, not a VHS tape, you can tell because they're smaller, as you can see there. Uh, this sold for a tenner. I bought a job lot of about 300 tapes uh, in December, I drove down to South Wales to get it. Um, hell of a job lot and I paid a lot of money for them, paid like £600 for them. Um, but they were a great selection of tapes and they've just been ticking along and selling really nicely for me. But here's an example of my title. Betamax videotape pre-cert, which means it came out before the certification, a BBFC certification in 1985. X-Rental, because it's an X-Rental videotape. Then you've got the title. Then you've got the publisher. Uh, you've got the year. And you've also got, if there's a well-known actor or actress, I'll put them in the title as well. All of our listings follow the same format here. What it is, uh, title. Uh, publisher, like if it's a record, the um, you know who who made the record, what year it came out on. We usually have condition for records as well, but we'll go back to that. Uh, photos. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Nice and clear photos there, and then same with the back there. Uh, nice and cropped, just consistent. That's upside down. See stuff. One here, this is to show the inside of the tape. They're very prone to mould, especially at some of these are like 40 odd years old now, some are even older. Usually been stored in garages and sheds and get damp and pick up mould, and in which case it can ruin the tapes, but the collectors don't like mould on the tape. So yeah, we always show a photo of that so they can see there's no mould on there. And then a last one, just of an angled shot, just showing the spine because you wouldn't be able to see that on the front or back one. The five photos, nice and straightforward, no description, uh, really, hang on, uh, all we put in our description, in good use condition and free of mould as shown, unable to test, so sold as a collectible, for any more rare, ETA, VHS and V2000 tapes are being listed, so be sure to check out our other listings. Uh, zoom in a little bit there so you can see that, and then I've just got a generic eBay blurb that I put underneath that I'm sure no one actually reads, so yeah, so that was that one. Uh, the film itself, I've never heard of. Apparently, it's got Courtney Cox in it. It would have had to have been one of her first films in 1985. I know she was in the Masters of the Universe film uh, before she became famous, and she was also in a very early Bruce Springsteen vid. So, 1985, it's like, uh, yeah, that's super early for her. So, that was that one. Next, we've got, oh, look at that. Check out, check out the masterful artwork here. This is a hardcore rave um, multi-pack of audio cassettes so these were quite a thing uh, back in the 90s and early 2000s uh, till people stopped making cassettes and then people stopped going to happy hardcore raves I guess so um, I bought again these were from a job lot traveled quite far to go and get them but bought literally a car boot full of them of a customer and I'm 
from about what's saying I must have had about two hundred items in the job lot down to the last fifteen or so now, and they've all just gradually sold. Um, I mean, look at that! Look how awful that artwork is. Eh? Amazing. Um, but you go to one of these nights, um, and at the end of it, they get everyone on the way out, and you part with their cash. You pay thirty quid for a pack of all these tapes and all the BJs that you'd listen to on the night, and they were quite a thing. I was never really into it, but my bro was into it at the time when it was out, like mid to late nineties. Um, so yeah, that was, that was quite a thing. And the, you know, some of them are quite collectible, quite sought after. Um, I'm quite surprised that they're um, they they haven't all sold yet. But we, again, like with a lot of things, the popular stuff sells first, and then it just tails off gradually. So I've had the whole thing about six months now. So I'm happy to sit on stuff. I'm still getting like fifteen pound sales off it. So yeah, that works for me. Again, very very simple listing. What it is, it's a rave tape, 12 pack, old school, techno, hardcore, heaven, live, sanctuary. Probably should have put the year on it, but didn't. Postage £3.40. Cost me £3 to post. No, it cost me £2.90 to post. Got 10p off on eBay. Um, so that's 50p extra. The difference helps cover the eBay fee, helps cover packaging materials. So yeah, that's, that, I, that's my standard second class small parcel postage cost on there, £3.40. Okay, so that's that one. Close that off. What are we on now? This sold tonight. This is a Star Wars Attack set. Came from a large job lot that I bought. There's a pattern here, large job lots. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's what I do really. I um, I advertise. I've got a business page on Facebook with over a thousand followers on it. Uh, I do paid advertising on there and I also do paid promoted listings on Marketplace and I get lots of people messaging me and I go and buy large collections from North Wales, all around the North West, Cheshire, that kind of place. So yeah, that's where most of my stock comes from. So uh, this was bought a couple of weeks ago. Um, I paid £300 for the whole job lot Star Wars Lego. This sold for £89.99 and it's missing a couple of the minifigures. It's only got these three guys here. It's missing one of the fellas in the middle. So we have a photography area. This was a little too big, so you can sort of see at the side there. I usually try and crop it out, but we're a little bit limited on space on that. So what we like to say is first photo shows you everything. That's your action shot. You can see everything you get in. So you've got the box. The buyer needs to see it's got the box. It's got the instructions. It's got the minifigs. And then like a sort of angled shot of the figure itself of the, of the vehicle. Next photo is a clear photograph of the box. There we go. Then a few of the model, some of the minifigures. There we go, nice and clear. This was only taken by a cheap phone. Uh, it's more than more than sufficient for eBay to be honest with that photo quality. That's a little bit dark, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, one of the side of it. Lego just brought out a massive version of one of these. I mean, don't get me wrong, this one isn't small, but the one they've bought out is like two foot tall, like 7,000 parts. It's incredible, but it's also £800, and I just can't justify that kind of money. Uh, one there of the cockpit open. Uh, another one of its butt. Uh, we do the minifigs there. And is that it? Oh, yeah, one of the instruction manuals, and that's what we got. So we try and use all the photos on something like that for £90. Uh, again, there, the description. Just says, set and box in excellent condition, includes two snow troopers and a different version of the attack driver. See photos for details. Does not come with blah, blah, blah. Again, I like to use this phrase a lot, see photos for details, because I truly believe it's the photographs that sell an item, not a description. So we don't waste time on a description unless it's to really note any flaws or imperfections in an item, or if it doesn't come with something, we'll put that in the description because they might not necessarily see that. Uh, okay, so that was that. Oh, bear with me, guys. We've literally got about 10 of them left now. This here is a model kit. Now, I do a little bit of consignment work, and what that is, for those of you who don't know, is I sell things for other people on eBay uh, for a commission. Uh, it's something I've only started doing recently, but it's a great way of acquiring really cool, interesting items. It's a good way of helping people out who don't necessarily in a rush to sell their items and want a little bit more for it than just selling it to me outright. So we, I take the items off their hands, I store it for them, we photograph it, we list it, we pack it, we ship it, we deal with all customer issues. And then when it sells, what I do, I've got some spreadsheets uh, with the different customers. And then once a week is I pay them the money that they owed, I work out what's sold, 
we have a couple of columns. We take off the 13% eBay and managed payment fees, and then we, we have an agreed commission rate uh, on those, which I'm not going to get into in this video because it varies from customer to customer. So, yeah, uh, and varies on what it's sold for as well. Um, but, yeah, so what I do here, the way I can find these consignment items is the two letters at the end of the customer's initials. So um, I can then search for those on sold listings and find at a glance what I've sold for that customer every week. So um, at the moment, it's making up about 10% of the sales. A uh, good thing is you don't pay VAT on the sales price on consignment items. You only pay VAT on the your commission fee. So nothing else of that transaction means that you have to pay VAT on, which is, is quite a, you know, it's a little saving. It's nothing amazing. So this is a model kit. A uh, customer I bought from, or I bought from, I've consigned his items. There were like a, over 100 different model kits of like planes and boats and things. Um, you know, we have a really good relationship with each other and if I've got anything I need to ask him he can come around, he can message me and we talk about his items and if he feels I might have underpriced something he'll tell me and you know and so on and, you know, and so I have a full open relationship with the customer which I think is great and it is something I'd like to get into a little bit further so anyone out there wants me to sell their things for them hit me up uh, so this is a model kit of the Titanic searcher, presumably the boat that sent down the little submersible to find the Titanic in the 80s, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so yeah, that's sold for $24.99. Um, again, description, very brief. New in box, model is unbuilt. The box is open, so listing as used. Box may have wear from storage, please see photos, blah, blah, blah. So that is that one. Of this right another lego set oh this is quite cool so we have a lego dragon now this was from the same lego star wars job lot that i bought that, that i've spoken about oh well, this was another part of the job lot so i paid 200 pound for the star wars lego and i paid another 300 pound or was it the way around 300 for the star wars lego and 200 pound for another huge quantity of lego off the same guy in amongst that was this dragon uh it's not Obviously, it's a dragon, so it's not a dinosaur, so it's not Jurassic World, anything like that. It's just really, really sought after. And this guy here is about that big, and he's listed for about four or five days, and he sold full price of £40. Absolutely amazing. Over the moon with that. That one figure's paid for like one-fifth of the entire job lot, the £200 job lot. So that's where I like to look at that. Now, weirdly enough, the set that it came from, 70403, you can buy that set on eBay right now for about 50 quid with the dragon with it. Sold the dragon on its own, 40 quid. So yeah, I'll let you go off and buy all those and, and split the dragons and flip them. It's on me, that one, you take it. So yeah, that's that's cool. That So we've got one sides, sides, back, back. Is that it? Yeah, just those. Should have maybe done a close-up one on that one, but didn't. That was that guy. What have we got next? It's exciting, isn't it? Right, okay. A prop. The, the item for sale was the phrenology, not the phrenology head, the, um, the paperback. But we've got this thing knocking around in the background and I quite like it. So we decided with all our paperbacks that we'd have that because I think it adds to it. I don't like using props. However, when we have like 100 paperbacks to list, and they're all vintage ones. And it was dead easy just to keep that there in the background. and thought it really added to the listing. So I actually bought a load of paperbacks from all the books they sell in bulk. Um, to other sellers so I bought I paid £75 for 80 paperbacks it was 80 of them it cost me less than a pound each it took us about a week to get them listed and um, I'm going to set my cats just decided to invade so sorry about that guys we've got a cat and he's amazing but he wants to know what I'm doing all the time so yeah anyway we well, not got rid of him, that would have been a bit harsh, we've just kicked him out of the room. Or well, not kicked him, that would also be a bit harsh, we've, we've hoofed him out of the room. So yeah, anyway, where were we? Right, uh, World of Books, I've, um, yeah, so I paid about a pound each for these books, and as you can see, this one here sold for eight pound. It's taken about two months to sell, um, but the good thing about when you buy a lot of similar items like this, easiest thing in the world to list, because we create one draft, we have a generic title, I give it to the staff, I say, right, there's 80, and then we, we, we create another 79 of those drafts, so we've got 80 drafts ready to go, and the staff now 
had the photos, so every single listing will look the same as, it, as every other one because the book will be in the same place. The title the, will be exactly the same on all of them, except for obviously we will change the book title, the author, and then this is how we are um, inventorying them. This is number 39. So when we come, when it sells, we've got them in a box, this particular box, which we know where they are. They're in our SKU inventory system. And we'll, instead of having to look for that particular uh, book, we just, bah, 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 we're just looking for the number 39. A little bit of masking tape, top left corner, jobs are good in. So yeah, so, you know, cost a pound, sold it for eight quid and took about two minutes to list. So yeah, happy days. You know, we'll, we'll, we take them all day long. That's a lovely little sale, that. Uh, it's an Agatha Christie book. Look, they're not in great condition. Look at that. Again, we always, always, always show condition. Um, we don't want the buyer getting nasty surprises. So yeah, it's got writing inside as most of them did have, but I think, you know, people aren't bothered. I don't know if whoever's bought this is buying it to read it or just buying it to collect or put it on the shelf or anything like that. But, um, you know, it's not in great shape and still went for £8. So these things are out there, guys. Uh, description was, we have to say, again, a generic description. We've just copy and pasted the, link, the description for every single one of these. Um, we have a selection of beautiful vintage pan paperbacks, each one in good use condition. May have minor inscription or mark. See photos for details. That's it. All you need. And then the photos tell the rest of the story. And those books have just been ticking along nicely. Oh, yep, had another sale there. 62 items to post in the morning. Wonderful. Uh, and there's only myself and my wife working tomorrow, so that's, that should be great. There's usually four of us on a Monday, so yeah. One of, the, one of our staff members is off, and the other one has damaged his wrist. Bless him. So if you're watching this, Rob, don't do it again. Uh, right, okay. Only joking. He's going to kill me for that. Close that one. Next one. Uh, nice, simple item. Sony PlayStation. Uh, bought this uh, in a bundle of games consoles, which paid £200 for. There were several PS3s, a couple of Xbox 360s, two PS2s, DS, and um, like five bags of games. And listed this this week and pay, well, what did I pay for it? A small part of £200. Um, and then we've got £60 for it. That sold within about three days. So, title uh, Sony PlayStation 3, Slim. PS3, console, 250 gig, plus two games, tested, bundle, that's it. It's not, you know, English lit, it's not Shakespeare, but it tells the customer everything that they need. Uh, what we do as well with all of our consoles, so that's our first picture showing everything they get with it. Second photo is always a photo of the console working, the number there, that's for us, that number there, so we can find it. Uh, again, we've got a section with like 20, 30 consoles in so we can know which one it is. So we're looking for console number two. We also have a test sheet that we fill in um, showing that each, each particular thing has been tested about the console. That goes with it when it's sold. Photos, we have... Sights in this, isn't it? Look, ooh, amazing. Who's never seen a PS3 before? So we've got front, we've got back. Always make sure you get photos of your serial number. Buyer tries sending it back. Always, there's always a chance. Most buyers are lovely, but you will get the odd one occasionally. It's going to send you back something that wasn't yours. Why well, always track serial numbers, yeah? Always keep that. Um, and then angle, angle, uh, it's cake, uh, controller, and games. That's it. Oh, is there another one? Oh, and cables. Don't know why we took a photo of the cables, but there we are. So that, that was that. That's all for £60. We charge £6, £5.99 shipping. We send it with UPS. We send everything that's over two kilos with UPS because they're amazing and we've never had any issues with them. We send about 30 parcels a week with UPS, all of them electronics, all of them usually valuable over like £30 in value. You get up to £60 cover with that for £5.76. We charge £5.99. Again, helps just offset the, the postage. Uh, eBay charges on the postage costs. That's the one. So yeah, five five ninety nine we charged. Uh, so totally recommend UPS on the eBay pack link for sending all your consoles and electronics with. Never an issue at all with us. But yeah, that's that one. So moving on, we got a, a cool little uh, Sony Hi-Fi system. This was a rare pickup from a charity shop. I don't really do charity shops anymore. I'll leave that for you other guys out there. But um. This is a very strange looking beast. It's so heavy, the whole front of it is metal. 
like this brushed aluminium uh, and then it looks like it's kind of like crescent shape so let's see if I can get a picture of it. Did we take a picture of it with the grills on? No we didn't. Uh, but yeah it's got these bright yellow grills but we took them off for the photos because I think it looked better just to show the speakers like that because they, they look awesome. Uh, so yeah it's the back of the item, picture of it working, picture of the sockets, picture of the front, oh hang on, uh, close up of that, close up of that opening, so that was lovely it was just like sort of touch sensitive thing on the top and then it opened so that sold for £60 uh, paid a fiver for it didn't have the remote control should have had a remote didn't still sold for 60 quid uh, and speakers detachable as well oh yeah that was the other thing yeah speakers kind of detach or they can be attached to it like that I'm looking down from the top yeah it's like a weird sort of like like a crescent like a smile shape it's really good um, that we charged £7.99 for because it was over 5 kilos in weight and it was about 7 kilos. Again, it went with UPS, um, which was like £6.76. Uh, we, it's fully insured though for that, so that's what we did with that. Uh, description, we went a little bit more on this. Uh, extremely good quality, Sony Micro Hi-Fi system, very heavy, no cheap plastic, lovely touch sensitive CD, open close, unusual shape, detachable speakers, CD and tape works great. Only slight issue, tape door needs pulling to fully open on its own when speakers are attached. So yeah, they put that on it. Um, that was that one. What have we got next? What is it? Oh, this is quite interesting. A Nintendo 64. So, I listed this and within an hour it sold. So faulty uh, Nintendo 64, sold for £20. Bang. In and out. Out the door. We tested it. It doesn't work. It power light comes on and that's it there's no display so we didn't test it any further and we you know that went for that price just on its own without any leads controllers anything like that so yeah that went and again just make sure you we put fault in the title we put we've put listed it as for parts or not working and then here in the description faulty n64 powers on but keeps resetting itself sticky reset button blah 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 so that was that then we, so yeah, faulty stuff sells, so make sure, don't bid it, okay? Or, you know, you never know. People are out there, let's let it be someone else's problem. If you get back, if, you, if you've paid 20 quid for something on a chance, on an off chance that it works, doesn't work, just sell it, you never know. You want your 20 quid back on it, and you've covered your costs then, and you've not lost any money, have you? This is quite cool. This is a Lego Millennium Falcon. Lego Millennium Falcon. Uh, Sunday night, and it's half ten, sorry. Uh, again, this was part of the Lego job, Star Wars job lot I bought. Uh, if you remember when I showed you the totals, like 500 odd quid on Lego, this was a uh, part of it. No minifigures. Does come with this really wicked display stand though, uh, which looked cool. I did, did, did we get it on? So, photo of an angle, other side, back, other back. That's it with all the bits opened on it. Oh, hang on. There we go. So you can see inside. But yeah, no minifigures with that. So this set brand new, I think it's £130. So you can literally go to Argos and buy it for £130 brand new with all the minifigs. Second hand, if it had the minifigs, probably would have got 100 for it. Um, so I was more than happy with £70 on that one. Five ninety nine. that went with UPS again. Uh, over two kilos in weight. So yeah, anything over two kilos, just UPS, that bad boy. Next one, we've got uh, an audio cassette. I haven't come across many of these lately, so we're still selling a lot of the stock that we had from buying the stuff from the comic shop where I used to have the business upstairs. I bought, they shut down and I bought all the records and CDs and bits and pieces. Uh, were these tapes from here? I can't remember. But yeah, so we've got a Dead Smart Bowie tape there. Pinups, that sold for $8.99. Got flat postage costs of $1.99 for tapes. Uh, they go as large letter. So yeah, that's the stuff from there. Uh, we've only got five items left. We've got another console here, PS2. Again, just let me show you how consistent our listings are. Sony PS2 console, controller and memory card, games bundle. Retro. Uh, you know, some people don't like using that word, but unfortunately, guys, PS2 is now retro. It's 22 years old. 22 years old. Who of my viewers remembers the PS2 when it comes out? It was the first game I played for it, Tekken Tag Tournament, I think. And I cannot believe that was 22 years ago, man. Where's that gone? Um, but yeah, so yeah, this is retro now. It's a retro console. 
So that sold for 46 quid uh, with two games. There's a picture of it working. There we go. And uh, a picture of the front, of the back with the serial number. Uh, and right shot, another right one. One of the controller and one of the games. Bang, that's it. That was on for about four days and it sold at that price. Um, uh, we sort of grade it. We've put in good 7 out of 10 condition. Fully clean, tested and works great. We're very thorough with cleaning these items because some of them are in hideous um, sort of conditions when they get into us. But we use uh, anti-static foam cleaner on most stuff and it gets, does the job. Right, what's next? We've got five, four left. Okay, uh, this here is a Killstar Contiki dress. Absolutely amazing. Uh, I bought a Killstar or an alternative website where they sell a lot of sort of goth and alternative um, clothing and accessories. Really, really cool stuff. Check out their website. It's amazing. Really quirky stuff and really good price as well. But before Christmas, they had a really good um, uh, Black Friday sale on or Cyber Monday or whatever it was. So... Spent about £300, bought a load of stuff off theirs. So it was like 75% off. Uh, not as much as sold as what I thought, but they are going. This here, I think, would have cost me about 12 quid, and I sold it for 40 um, It's taken two months, but it's finally sold. So there you go. Look, one available, one sold. Um, but yeah, that's dead smart, that. Uh, we used, um, let's say that's me in a wig. It's not. We used the photos from their website. Before they, if they ask us to take it down, we'll take it down. There we go. It was just easier to have that there than take, you know, take any extra photos because that can show it off a lot better than than just like hanging it up on a bit of wood would do. So there we go. Uh, brand new in packaging, size medium. Um, that's all we needed to do. That's sold. Dead small. Uh, this horrible boy is a vintage WWF figure. This is Doink the Clown. Um, I bought a load of vintage toys. I drove to Leeds for it, which is like two and a half hours away, and bought a whole collection of someone. Lovely, lovely couple. Uh, I think they're Claire and Mike. Yeah, very really nice guys. And um, in them was like loads of WWF figures, and um, they've all been selling. And we've only I haven't got too many left now, but this one here, all of them came with the original sort of the cut out bits of the card with like the sort of um, statistics and what kind of people they are and how many people they've murdered and stuff like that. Um, how many extra people have they murdered in the queue? So yeah, so I think someone bought four of these off me. So I just thought Doink was quite cool. That was when 90s wrestling was like really bad before the Attitude Era. So we've got front photo, back photo there. That's showing the... It's not really clear that actually. Is it? Look at that. Oh dear. That's showing the copyright sign. Uh, and then that there showing the damage on there. It looks like Jeremy Beadle. Look at that. Uh, so, yeah, wonderful. That sold for £9. Here we are. Mary Hinge. I sold a, <laughs> a set of hinges. £35. How exciting. Some hinges. I went to my local DIY store last week to buy some timber, to buy, making some shelves, long story, and they had a big table as you went in with a load of clearance stuff, and I was like, ooh, my little radar started twitching. I was like, what have they got? So they, 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 they had these really heavy-duty hinges. They're meant for fire doors. They swing sort of both ways, get you. Calm down. Uh, not like that. Um, these ones here, I think I paid a five or four, and they've been on a week, and they sold for £35. Shame that they only had the one of these because I'll take £30 profit on an item all day long. Um, really, really heavy though. As you can see, I've um, charged £6 delivery because I think they're about three kilos in weight. So yeah, really pleased with that. So don't forget, even if it's like boring, mundane stuff, not everything we find is cool and interesting and you can make videos about. Look at that. Hinge, 30 quid gone. That's like an hour's wages for me. Um, so yeah, that was that. Now this here, the next item, yeah, save the best till last. We don't need that last one. We'll get rid of that. So we're on to the last item now. 
it's the most expensive record I've ever sold and one of the uh, biggest items I've ever sold in terms of value. So yeah, let's uh, show you this boy. This is the Rolling Stones Exile on Main Street. First pressing record. Okay, so this is uh, a later old Rolling Stones album from the late 70s, I believe. Uh, I do like the Rolling Stones, wouldn't consider myself a fan fan, but you know, I like their well-known stuff like Sympathy for the Devil, Paint It Black and all that amazing stuff. Um, but this album here, okay, I bought this from a job lot and this came to me through locally, someone in the village that I live in. Uh, they got a leaflet of mine through the door because I do that from old school. We do leaflets and it works. So leaflet through the door and then a couple of weeks later they rang me to say I've got some records. So 50 records, I paid £250. That was a lot of money for 50 records. I don't tend to spend that much on individual items when I'm buying a job lot. But I could see by the quality of them, there's a few Led Zeppelin, there's a few Pink Floyd, a few Rolling Stones. So I was thinking, you know, I'm going to get at least £10, £15 an item back on these. You know, I didn't, because records are a nightmare. I love selling records because look at that. But at the same time, good God, unless you're like a walking encyclopedia, you pick up a record, you don't know. But this here, that could have been a £10 record, a £30 record. Never in a million years thought that could have been a £300 record. So this here, as you can see, it's quite badly yellowed. But other than that, it's in really good condition. It's the first pressing. This took me half an hour to research. It genuinely took me half an hour on Discogs, which is amazing. Um, to make sure because for any particular album there can be like two three hundred different versions of it and you need to be absolutely sure you're asking 300 pounds for a record that you know um, what version it is because the last thing you need is to sell that and it come back saying uh, excuse me this actually is the Dutch release and blah 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 you didn't read the matrix numbers properly or actually it should have a different inlay in it or oh my god there's, there's so much that can go wrong with records so has taken a while to build up that confidence to be able to say right that is I had that on for four hundred pound I shot it to the moon and I took it off for three hundred because it's three hundred pound for a record and you know what I could have waited but that was listed less than a week and I got three hundred pound for it and that's paid for that entire job lot of records that one item has and I'm absolutely over the moon with it um, so um, yeah let me show you how we do records so photo of the front photo of both records next to one another close up of the label showing the information now it's so hard to tell but generally you can tell what pressing it is by some usually it's copyright information on the label um, some earlier pressings won't have a particular thing here that other ones will and then on on the gap here bet between the label and where the record sort of finishes Called the dead wax and that's where the matrix numbers are and so you're know, quite often the certain matrix numbers show if an item's the first pressing and obviously it's the first pressing it's like the first edition of a book that's more desirable for collectors but this um this has gone to japan and the guys paid 20 pound postage it's sold but it's not global shipping it's gone directly to japan it cost me 25 pound to send it but that was including 250 pound insurance so i was more than happy to take the hit on that so Yes, that says four ninety nine, but it actually did go overseas. That did to a collector in Japan. I've got a feeling it's probably worth a lot more, but I'll be honest with you, I'm taking two hundred pound. If this guy knows Japanese record collectors who might be paying five, six, seven hundred pound for it, happy days. Let him make the money. It's cost me a fiver. I've got three hundred pound for it. I'm like, that is absolutely incredible. Um, you know, that's my wages for the week on that one record. Um, so, yeah. It also came with some postcards, and I think this is why it went for what it did, because there's 12 postcards that came with it, and they're usually not with it, or you only get one or two of them. They were all there, and they were all in mint condition. So the whole thing was amazing. Uh, what I've tried to do here is it's very difficult, but... Oh, there we go. That's actually come out really well. You guys can hopefully see there the matrix numbers. Uh, showing that that's D1, which means it's like the lowest pressing of this particular record. So yeah, happy days on that one. So that is, oh here, you are, this is how I described this. I've gone a bit more on this description, obviously because of what it is. Uh, UK true first pressing, A1, B1, C1, D1, 
extremely rare first issue, the earliest available of his masterpiece, comes with all 12 postcards, which are in mint condition. The records themselves hardly been played, very little marks on them, literally one or two. Usual discoloration to the sleeve. One sleeve edge has been split along the join and been taped. How to wear has very minimal wear on the corners. It still held its boxy shape. PC photos, future reference. And that was it. That was enough. Photos did the rest of it. I think I might have sent in some other photos as well um, through messages. He wanted some extra photos of the postcard, so that sealed the deal. So thank you, Izanami150, dude. You are, you made my, my month. That was amazing. So that there, guys, that is a typical eBay week for us at Retro Electro, which is our business. Uh, we've got a website. A uh, link is going to be hopefully in the description, maybe on the video, there'll be a click, clickable link if you can work out how to do that as well. I'm going to do one of these a week, so if you like this kind of thing, stay stay tuned. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, ask questions, do anything you want. I'm here to help you guys make more money on eBay. I can do it. I'm an idiot. You guys can too. Have fun. Bye-bye.